during your career, uh, you have been United States champion, intercontinental champion, uh, ECW champion. You have got uh, a lot of uh, title reigns. And I would like to ask you um, during your career in general, uh, who has been your biggest supporter uh, during your title reigns and in your career in general? Oh, well, my biggest supporter is, of course, family and my kids. Um, that's, that's what I do everything for, man. I've been... I've been doing this forever and and it's one thing to be able to show your kids that hard work does pay off and that's what I that's what I've been doing every time when I win a title I bring it home we take some pictures we have some fun and we celebrate so absolutely without a doubt but then you know I have a lot of people um, that I grew up with from like some of my wrestling partners some of my old wrestling partners some of my old teammates and everybody they know what I'm about they know how hard I work and they know that it's time You know, I deserve what I get because I put in the work to get it. We'll come next to Christian Bruns in Germany. Hey, Bobby, it's been like about 10 months now since the Hurt Business was formed on Monday Night Raw. You crossed paths as MVP over the years at different points, and you have known Shelton for quite a while as well. So how has it been working with the crew on and off screen, and how has it helped your career like get to the next level now? Man, they're... No, there it's it's been amazing, man. It's been amazing because it, originally when um when MVP came back <clears throat> to the Rumble, um he and I we just started talking, started brainstorming. It was something that I wanted to do for some time and bring a group together. And um, MV, but MV, I talked to MVP about it about kind of coming on as kind of the advisor, and then and then we looked at some of the best participants, but some of the best people that we could put in, but not just best wrestlers. We we looked at people that were going to be close to us. And I mean, I've been friends with these guys forever. So everything that we're doing is, is natural because we are close. We are friends. So it's, it's been great, man. Every day we come in, we all put in work. And then afterwards, we all go have a bite to eat. And, and, and we just brainstorm and we think of what our next strategy is. So it's, it's a good time, man. And, and those guys have been great for, for everything. The Hurt Business is on fire right now, man. We just keep going. We're going to come next to the UK, to Gary Cassidy at Inside the Ropes. Hi, Bobby. How's it going today? Hello. Hello. Can you hear me okay? Yo. Yeah, I can hear you now. Excellent. So the last time, or actually, I think it was the first time I spoke to you, um, it was actually a very different time because it was before a live show in the UK, which seems like a, a, a lifetime ago now, but it was a lifetime ago for you because you'd just finished a storyline with... Sami Zayn with, you know, Lashley's sisters. You were in a storyline with Lana where you were married to her. The one thing that you, you'd kind of picked or that I'd picked out that you said during that time was, um, if I'm not going to face Brock Lesnar, I don't know why I'm back in WWE. Obviously, we're, a, you know, a long time away from that. Completely different presentation. I want to ask, if you become WWE champion, is Brock Lesnar the man you want to defend against? And also just a little aside, What has been the, the reason for the journey that you've gone on and, you know, the, the, how you've gone from being Lashley's sister segments to being one of the most intimidating guys in the company? <laughs> well, it was always me. First of all, it was always me. Um, you know, and, and what I always tell people is that you ha I, I love and enjoy every single thing that I've done in the, in, in the WWE and everything that I've done, period. You know, a lot of people are like, well, you weren't where you're supposed to be. And everything's a journey. Everything is a journey, and, and my journey was, of course, a little different since coming back. But, man, I look back at it, and I say, you know what? It, it just shows that I'm willing to pay the dues. It shows that I'm, I'm in there for the show, and it shows there that I'm, I'm ready for, for my time. And, and as far as Brock, you know, Brock's one person, but how I look at it is Drew beat Brock in, like, no time. <laughs> so, um, of course, my sights were set on, set on Brock for some time, but... Like I said, I mean, Drew's the man. Drew's the one that beat him. Drew beat him. Drew beat Goldberg. So, um, of course, Brock is is that is that um, kind of mystery match, dream match that everybody's wanted me to have for some time right now. But um, right now, I'm, I'm looking to beat the best. And right now, the best, you know, is Drew. Drew's the top guy. So if, if I beat Miz or when I beat Miz, um, I think Drew's the guy. Let's come next to Australia. Let's come to Jack Hudson at the Inner Sanctum. Hi, Bobby. How are you going? Fantastic. Um, I just wanted to ask, um, what is the biggest piece of advice that you would give to Bobby Lashley at the start of his career, knowing what you know now? 
um, what kind of advice I would give. Yeah. Uh, my advice would be uh, stay strong. <laughs> you know, the wrestling business has its ups and downs. And like everybody, everybody knows, everybody says, you know, it's, it's not always you're on top. And there's some times where you have to scrape and crawl and, and beg and plead and do everything you can. So I would tell, I would tell my old self the same thing that I, I knew from the beginning is persistence. Stay in there, stay in the fight, no matter what. Because like my favorite quote is the harder you work, the luckier you get. And I'm not, I'm not scared of hard work and I'm not afraid of hard work. So um, I knew luck was on its way just based on the hard work that I put in. Let's come to uh, Julio uh, at La Republica in Peru. Peru. Okay. Yes. Uh, thank you, first of all, Bobby, for, for the time. Um, we, we follow your, your wrestling career through the years, but we know very little about your personal life. And um, for us, uh, South Americans, Spanish speakers, uh, something that surprised, surprised us uh, a lot is that you have Panamanian ancestry. So yes. what we want to know is how connected are you with your Latin American roots? Thank you. Well, you know what? Um, so my, my family came from Panama. So I'm my first generation here. I'm, I'm, me and my sisters, my, my dad moved here um, when he joined the military after, you know, when he was 20 years old and then he had us here in the United States. Unfortunately, he didn't speak a span. He didn't teach us Spanish, which I'm kind of upset about, but, um, uh, I'm still, I'm still really in touch with my Latin background. Um, I go to Panama. I went to Panama a few years back, um, met family and, and, and I love it. I mean, I keep in contact with all of them and we have Panamanian reunions and stuff like that. So, um, I'm, I'm really intense and I like to keep coming back and do something. I know I talked to my dad a little while back about possibly opening up a school out there or, um, or opening up a gym or some kind of training facility. So that's kind of something that I'd like to do in the future. And hopefully I can, I can make that happen. We'll come to uh, Lucas next at VL Media in France. Hello, Bobby. Uh, next Monday on Monday Night Raw, you will, you will be facing The Miz for the WWE Championship 15 years after your WWE debut. What does that opportunity mean to you? Man, it means, it means everything, everything. Because if, if you know, like the time that I had off when I was away from WWE, um, I, went, I went off and, and I fought um, to legitimize myself. I, I went out and did independent promotions to... Um, kind of give back to to wrestling and show the wrestling community the the independent wrestling community that that I'm paying dues and I'm showing respect. So I, I feel that I've I've been crossing all the boxes and checking all the boxes off up until this point. And ultimately, you know what? That is the best thing and the greatest thing that you can do in the wrestling business is to win that world title. And I always knew that I had what it took to be there. I just never had the opportunity to get there. So now this Monday, having the opportunity to get there. Man, I'm training, I'm training like you wouldn't believe. Um, ever since I came back, I've been training like you wouldn't believe. And, and it's just kind of a, a testament to show, like I say before, and I'm going to say it again, and I'm going to continue saying it over and over again. The harder I work, the luckier I get. So this is it. I mean, this is what my whole career is about. I'd like to be able to go to Hall of Fame and know that I won world titles and know that I was at the top of the food chain when it came to everything in the sport of professional wrestling. Let's come to Vicente Beltran at Marca in Spain. Sweet. What are we getting started? Oh, Hello, Spain. Thank you. Yo. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. So I wanted to ask you about because I already read a few reports about a match between Bobby Lashley and Brock Lesnar WrestleMania 37 for the WWE right. Championship. Uh, don't you think that maybe it's a lack of uh, respect uh, talking about these kind of matches when you're still not the champion and when someone like Brock Lesnar is not even in the company? All right. Anything else for you guys? I'm sorry. Did you? Can you repeat that last part? You kind of broke out. Yeah. Uh, no, I wanted to ask you because uh, the match, uh, everybody's talking about the match between uh, you and Brock Lesnar. But I don't know if you think that it's a lack of respect because uh, you are not the champion still. And then Brock Lesnar is not even in the company. So is it maybe a lack of respect towards the champion and the championship? Absolutely. Um, because, like I said before, Drew beat Brock. 
Um, so of course he's probably at home a little upset, but, um, at the end of the day, in order to be the champion, you got to beat the man. That's what everybody always says. The, the famous quote by Ric Flair, be the man. You got to beat the man. And Drew's the man. I mean, um, I helped Miz beat Drew. Uh, but outside of that, Drew's been the man. So I think all the focus should be on Drew. And then if Brock wants to come back in the picture, Brock's going to have to work his way back up there to that title shot. And there's a lot of people right up there at that front door. Myself, Braun, um, the Miz. And there's several other people that want to get that shot at the title. So um, he's not the man. So, of course, that that fight, everybody would love to have sometime in my career just because of the similarities between Brock and I. But at the end of the day, if Brock comes back, I welcome that challenge. It's up to him. If he doesn't, Drew's the man. Next up, we're coming to Dan Marlin at Sport Bible in the UK. Hey, Bobby. Uh, thanks for your time. Um, obviously it's been a great year for the Hurt business what do you think has been the best moment as part of the faction obviously you became the United States champion you had a big feud with Retribution what's been your highlight of being in the Hurt business you know it's we, we always say it's matches of course matches make highlights of your career but I think just the synergy of us all getting together has been the highlight the time we were all able to stand in front on that on that stage with holding all golds up. That, that was a huge, huge moment for myself and for the whole group. But then, I mean, there's, there's, there's so many different points that we've had from just hanging out, just being together, bringing the group together. And um, like you said, and everybody always says, the best is yet to come. But up to this point, I think just at that time when we all held up the golds, I, I think that kind of like legitimized us as a group. There hadn't been too many factions that came together where everybody was standing there with gold around their waist. So that was huge. We're going to come next to, it's one of my favorites, so I'm expecting big things. Let's come to Faisal at GWS in Saudi Arabia. Yes, hi. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, yes. Since uh, day one, Bobby Lashley, you, you have been prepared to be WWE champion since a long time. So you have really a big chance uh, against uh, Miz to be what you want to be. So how do you prepare this match? Well, I, I think you answered the question at the beginning. When I first came in, I should I was looked at as, as a world champion material. So training hasn't changed. Of course, I always ramp things up just a little bit more when it goes to those big matches, but training hasn't changed. I'm doing all the same things that I've always done. And um, I, it's just, I, I work a little harder, I work a little smarter, but, um, it's, it's business, man. The her business is about business and it's business as usual. Let's come next to uh, Maurizio uh, over in Mexico. Yes, hi, Bobby. Yo, hello. Uh, everybody's talking about the WWE champion, the WWE opportunity you have the next uh, week. But we, we saw something last Sunday. Can we say you have a partial credit uh, of this uh, WWE Championship uh, reign? Yeah, it was, it was 100% because of me. <laughs> Miz, that's, that's what the whole deal was about. Miz was looking at a way to cash in that briefcase, and he knew that he didn't have an opportunity to just catch Drew um, when he was down because when Drew's down, he gets right back up. So he had to make sure to find a way that Drew cannot get back up. And there's only a, there's only one person in the company that's been able to put Drew down and make Drew stay down. So that's why the deal was made with me. But of course, we're businessmen. So that business of helping him enabled me to get the shot that, I've, I've, that was inevitable, that I needed, that I wanted, that I finally got. So, of course, I was the reason why Miz won the title. Next up, we're going to come to Matty Paddock over in the UK. Hi, Bobby. Thanks for your time. Um, no you've, touched on it. you've touched on it on a couple of previous questions with regards to kind of the, the evolution of, of the Hurt business, but I want to touch on specifically what it's done 
uh, not only for the, the career of Shelton, obviously he's had a, you know, a great career, but he's coming back to prominence now and Cedric in particular, because incredible athletes, though they are, they obviously weren't really being utilised terrifically on television prior to the Hurt Business. Tell me about kind of their contribution to it and, and how pleased you are that they're now kind of getting recognition, really, that many feel they deserve. Yeah, man. Um, I, I love it. I think it's amazing. You know what? There, there was one thing that I keep going back to these quotes that I live by. Um, and, and one of the quotes is sometimes you have to believe in somebody else's belief in you. And when um, MVP and I put together the Hurt Business, we looked at some of the people that we knew that had a huge amount of potential. They just needed to be there. On the, on the right platform or be with the right group. And and if you look down that roster, you couldn't think of a better person than Sheldon Benjamin Cedric. I mean, Sheldon's been amazing since his entire career. And and same as um, same with, with Cedric. Those both of those guys are incredible. So they just needed to be in the right group and, and, and be around the right people in order to see their full potential. And that's what we did. That's the main thing that MVP and I had talked about. So um bringing those guys in they, they were a perfect fit for it but at the same time they're also really good friends so it's good to see those guys uh, right back on top where they deserve to be let's come next to andrew spores hi bobby how's it going fantastic good um I'm just interested to know when you returned in 2018, uh, what, what was the main motivation for your return? And was there any hesitation at all to return to the company? Um, there was no hesitation and there was motivation from the term from the time that I left. Um, you know, sometimes you have to take a step back in your career to, to, to propel forward. And I thought that it was a good time. I was at a real high point in my career when I left originally. But at the same time, there was some unfinished business that I that I wanted to attend to with fighting. And there were some things going on in my life. So when I um, when I left, I actually went right into training because I thought that um, staying up and, and going to fight a little bit would kind of ease that tension of that drive of wanting to still compete. But at the same time, um, the fighting was something that I kind of took to legitimize myself. So that I get those big matchups, you know, if 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 the Brock matchup was going to happen, I would have the fight background. If 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 you know the big matches like with Drew coming in as hot as he is, you know, what's a new equalizer for Drew? Somebody that has a fight background, somebody that loves to fight, somebody that has proven his fight ability. So um, it goes beyond wrestling. It's just something that um, you know, you have to take a step back and prepare for. So I never wanted to leave, and I and 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 coming back, I, I knew that it was a good time. Thank you. So I was ready. I was ready for my comeback. Let's come next to uh, Nims over at SEN Radio Australia. G'day, Bobby. Great to chat. Uh, now, you talk about the, the stellarness you've had in your career. This is probably one of the biggest matches that we've seen on Monday Night Raw or the anticipation for it in quite a long time. But you're absolutely no stranger to these high-profile matches. I mean, famously, you're part of WrestleMania 23 with the Battle of the Billionaires. In fact, here in Australia at Super Showdown, the first ever live broadcast, you tagged with John Cena. So, And you've been a world champion outside of the WWE. So how would you rank all of those opportunities compared to this one to uh on monday night raw since it seems to be so important for your career man you know what i i, I can say all those were enormous but this one is it's it's at wwe it's a world title in wwe you can't get any higher than this so i mean i gotta put this like a little bit higher than everything else but like you said before man i am i am ready i am prepared i was built for these kind of matches i love them you know, some people get the, you know, the butterflies in their stomach. I get the same butterflies, but at the same time, man, I go out there and I just, I, I love it. I embrace it. I can't wait for Monday to happen. Like I, I'm training. I'm, 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 I'm trying to get to sleep early so I can wake up early so I can train again and prepare for it. So this match is going to be enormous. I mean, me and Mez, we're going to, we're going to tear down the house, but I'm going to, I'm going to rip them apart and take that title. Cause this is something that's owed to me. Let's come next to uh, August at Wii Sport in France. Yes. Uh, hi, uh, Bobby. Um, hey. Last Sunday, you lost your United States uh, ch Championship at Emission Chamber. 
uh, when you when you will have won uh, the WWE championship, uh, is uh, is what you will want to to recover this United States uh, uh, championship and become a, a, a double ch champion? You know that would be beautiful. That would be beautiful to win the WWE championship and then and then go back and beat up Mid or beat up Riddle. And um and take the United States take the United States championship that would be huge. I never even thought about that. I, I kind of put all my focus towards Miz at the time since I had that match. But um now that you say that, that might be something that we might have to sit down with with the herd business to decide if we want that title too. Because right now, like we said it many times before, we're in for the gold, man, and we're trying to take them all. Let's come over to Kenny McIntosh at Sporth in the UK. Hey, Bobby, how's it going? Fantastic. Uh, well, listen, I just kind of picking up from previously, I mean, I think in, in, in fans' eyes, the biggest match you've had in WWE so far was the Battle of the Billionaires at WrestleMania 23 with Trump, McMahon, and Austin. And I kind of wondered, you know, when you beat Miz, are you looking towards this year's WrestleMania? Because, you know, you walking into you, the first WrestleMania with fans in two years with the WWE Championship, that feels like it would eclipse your WrestleMania 23 match, which is the biggest one you've had so far. Has that entered your mind? And how important would that be for you as a kind of milestone to be able to be the guy to walk into that WrestleMania with the belt? Oh, wow. You know what? Th those were, um, I got to say yes to all of those. And I, I, yeah, man, I, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so focused on just that Monday match that, that all those other things that you said, um, I've kind of tried to push in the back burner a little bit, but absolutely beating Miz, I 100% I, I believe that I'll be going into WrestleMania to, to be the main event because there, there's there's two opponents out there that still hunt, actually three opponents out there that are still fired up and still ready to go for that title. You know, what I did to Drew, I'm sure Drew is going to want to have an answer to that. So um, after beating Miz, you know, I got I to gotta keep my, uh, my head on a swivel because I don't know where he's going to be coming from or when he's going to be coming back to kind of invade, avenge what I did to him. So I got I to gotta keep my eye out for Drew. But at the se sec second token, if Drew is a real man, what he would do is allow me to have that match with Miz and then challenge me for that title at WrestleMania. That's what he would do if he was a real man. So we'll just see how he reacts. Let's come over to uh, Patricio um, at Red Goal in Chile. Hi, Bobby. Hey, how's it going? Fine, fine. It's really great talking to you, really. Uh, this is the same question uh, I asked the Miss a few days ago, your next rival. How much um, do you miss the fans on the arena, and especially the Chilean fans, who are very much appreciated by the WWE? Would you like to come back to Chile when the pandemic allows it with the title in the Johans uh, tank? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And we all do. Everybody that talks about it in the locker room and the show, we, I mean, we miss the fans more than anything. I know the fans miss coming to the show, but we miss them also. The energy of the fans cannot be matched by anything. So, I mean, we get them, we get, we get the fans there and the fans get to have the experience of being able to log in, which is a cool thing. And, and more people get to actually be there in the arena because of it from all over the world. But at the same token, it's it's one thing that we want to actually be right up face to face with some of those fans, and we will be at WrestleMania. And as far as Chile, I absolutely love Chile, and I was just telling my son that the other day is that we're gonna go and we're gonna start um, traveling as soon as we can. And I love South America. I love I love to travel. I love Central America. I love I love anywhere because my family, like my family, is a Latin. It's from Panama, from Central America. So we're definitely going to get back out there and travel and visit. And hopefully the WWE can get back out there to the Chile, the Chile fans because they're amazing. When we went out there, it was just the, the energy was amazing. So um, we're definitely looking forward to getting back there in front of the crowd. And I think the crowd's ready for us too. Let's come to Alistair McGeorge at Metro in the UK. Hey, how's it going, man? Fantastic. Good, good. Um, I wanted to touch on Hurt Business's interactions with Retribution last year. There's sort of two factions who've been on very different trajectories. So I was wondering, first of all, what did you think of how that storyline sort of panned out? And do you think Retribution could still be rebuilt into a dominant force like we've seen with the Hurt Business? Um, you know what? I believe 
I will not like the herd business. I, I think that they have their own, um, their own direction that they need to go. But I know that one thing is, and I know that they have Ollie at the, at the front of that, of the retribution and Ollie's incredible. He has a great mind for the business. He has, he has the energy and he brings everything to retribution. So I think that they have a lot, a long ways to go. I think you're going to see a resurgence of, of retribution. They just need to find a different show because they can't be on the same show with the herd business because the herd business runs raw. So if they want to be able to bring themselves back up and be a dominant force, they may need to look at SmackDown and they may need to look at a different different direction. But I love those guys and I love that feud. They have some big strong guys there that are that are tough and they have Ali that is that is probably one of the best in the business. So I think that they have a long ways to go. Right, we've only got time for a few more short questions. So we're gonna, we'll start with Ash Rose. We'll then we'll come to Elva and we'll end with Ollie. So uh, let's start with Ash Rose, go ahead. Hey Bobby, uh, just a quick one from me then. In, in terms of, it's a big match on Monday. Would you say this is possibly one of the biggest matches in your Raw career? You know, we've seen Miz do media this week. He's up for it. How does it rank in terms of all the stuff you've done on Monday Night Raw in the previous? Well, I'm, I'm going to put it at the top just because of what's behind it. Um, I've had some great matches on Raw. I mean, I, I beat Roman on Raw. Um, I had I had um, Finn Balor on Raw. I had Elias on Raw. I had Braun on Raw. I mean, there's been so there's been some crazy things involved um, that I've been doing since I've been back, and and all have been great experiences. But just having the chance to go for that WWE title and be able to get that WWE title, I think that's got to be on the on the top of my list. Let's come over to Elva. Elva, please go ahead. Hi, Bobby. Thank you for your time today. Um, I want to ask you about the hard business. If you can add any woman on the roster, who will be and why? If I can have what? Uh, add any woman. Any woman? You, yeah. Oh, oh shoot. Um, <laughs> see, this is how rumors get started. Uh, there's a couple people that I think that would be um, definitely in line for the herd business. One of the ones that I've, I've seen tweeted about several times, and I think that she's just in line for what we're doing is, I mean, Naomi, Naomi's one. She's, she's definitely on top of the list. Uh, another person that, that some people hadn't thought about too much is Mickey James. Mickey James. I mean, I, I started out around the same time Mickey did in, and Mickey and I have been really close friends for a long time. And I think she has that same mental attitude that we have, the her business has. So I think Mickey would definitely be someone. And I don't want to leave out anybody, but there's a couple other people that we've kind of um, been talking about. But um, I'll, I'll just leave it at those two for right now. Let's come to our final question with uh, Ollie Browning at Gimme Sport in the UK. Hey, Bobby, thanks for your time. Um, obviously, it's really exciting to talk to you ahead of this title shot because, you know, a lot of fans think that this is where you belong on the roster, you know, dominating on Raw for the past year, shot of the World Championship. And I know you said you enjoyed everything you've done since coming back, but was there any part of you that felt a bit frustrated with where you, with where you were on the card in sort of the, the, the years previously? And did you expect to have to wait almost three years to be in this position now? <laughs> you know what? I, you know, I thought at the beginning, I thought that because of who I was and what I did and who and, and what I'm capable of doing, I thought that I should have been right at the top, right as soon as I walked into the business, um, right, walked back in. But you know what? That's not how it works in business sometimes. Sometimes you have to, you have to do the work and you have to pay your dues. WWE is no different from any other huge organization that um, they're not just going to let somebody come in and walk right up to the top. You have to go and pay your dues. I know I paid dues before. And, and I paid dues when I wasn't in the WWE when I took my break when I was fighting and everything. But um, coming back, I felt that I would have to kind of grovel a little bit and have to do some of the dirty work. But I think ultimately, and I knew ultimately, I would be right where I needed to be and where I deserved to be, and that was on top. So I just realized we actually, we probably only missed out one person. So let's go to you for a question anyway. Last question. Actual last bonus question. Let's come to Saul <laughs> at record. Uh oh, drum roll. Hi, Bobby. Hey, what's up? 
Hey, uh, in the second in the second stage in WWE, you had had more projection, and this will be your second chance for the WWE Championship. What did you learn from that first opportunity against Drew McIntyre at Backlash? Um, never take your eyes off the title. That's the biggest thing. You know, every, when you get into the wrestling business, there's all kinds of factors that can kind of, kind of pull you away and, 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 and take your focus off of what's important. And that's what I did. I mean, having a big opportunity like that, I never, ever want to have an opportunity like that get pulled away from me because I don't have my, my focus on where it needs to be. Going up against Miz, you, you can just think how many people right now don't want that to happen. Drew, pissed off because of what I did to him at the pay-per-view. Braun, pissed off because I put him to sleep last week on Ma, on Raw. And then anybody else going after uh, Miz, Miz has a ton of people that want, that want, it, want his head. So um, although I have Miz to, to focus on, um, I got to kind of look at, keep all those other factors in the back of my mind. But um, if I just keep focused on Miz and I go out there and do what I need to do, I don't think I should have a problem winning this title. Well, there we go. We've heard it from the man himself. So I guess the final word, Bobby, with you, what can we expect to see this Monday on Raw? I mean, total friggin' destruction. I mean, just like I did, and let's do that same thing I've been doing this these last few weeks, total destruction. Man, I'm on a different mind frame right now than anyone in the roster. And and I mean, MVP's been putting stuff in my ears to just fire me up before this, before every match. So right now, anybody that steps in that ring with me is going to get just completely destroyed. And I will be walking out with that WWE championship.